Hey everyone, welcome to tank tips number two. We decided this week, since we did a saltwater reefscape last week, that we were going to do a freshwater dryscape this week. Now I promise every week's tank tips won't necessarily be tank creations and things like that unless you request it. If you want to see more tank videos where we do designs from week to week, let me know. If you're fine with what you got, we're just going to kind of press on and change them up. But I did want to do a freshwater equivalent, some type of idea that went with the saltwater idea. So what we're doing this week is we're going to do Dragon Rock. Now this is also a Carib C product. It has some of the most fantastic shapes. There's no rock that's the same. It's not quite as easy to stack as is the Carib C reef rock and reef rock in general. Just due to the fact that it's that the porosity of it, all the jagged edges, and the fact that none of them are the same. However, visually it is one of the most stunning rocks. And with Game of Thrones and the whole Dragon Rock thing, I thought we'd do a Dragon Rock scape this week. So let's kind of see what happens. I've got the Dragon Rock. I've got some pebbles that I may or may not use as a path. I haven't overly thought this out. And I have some branches to kind of give it a different type of uh, texture, maybe. I don't know that we'll use these, but we've got them if we want to. Now, let's begin. A couple things I'd like to say. When designing a concept tank or any tank that has any type of conceptual value at all, take get as much of what you can to work into your palette as possible. So get more rock than you need, get more twigs than you need, whatever it is that you're going to decorate with. And then kind of shuffle through it. Get your big pieces that you know are going to be base pieces. Get your smaller pieces set aside. And especially if you've got any elongated pieces, these are great for bridge work and overhangs and things like that. If you kind of get them separated in the beginning, it'll make it much easier as you're starting to pull from things as you start to build it, even if you don't have a clear direction of where you're headed. Another thing that I would suggest, now I'm cheating this week. I'm using the sand from last week. Were I doing an African cichlid tank or something that required a high pH, I could actually use the saltwater sand and build around it. For posterity's sake, I would always suggest if you're doing any really planned nice artistic design use neutral things use a neutral background as you can see I've used blue this week last week was black I've used white as the sand black would work as well main reason for this is we want your attention to go to what it is we're creating in here or what you're creating out there what I don't want is to have things like a very busy background or multicolored black, blue, brown, red, yellow gravel that detracts from what it is we're trying to show. The idea is to make what's in here look like the artistic thing. If you neutralize it by keeping a white or black color, blue or black solid colors, you're going to achieve a much more beautiful tank display. Dusting myself off from all of this, one thing I failed to mention in the beginning is absolutely, if you're working with Dragon Rock, wash it really, really good because it does bleed in the water when you fill the tank up. And while I wish I could do that with this one as well and see what it's like for fish to move around, you can kind of see what kind of transpired with the whole design. And I think while it started a little Game of Thrones, it might have ended more Lord of the Rings, but that's okay. And for those people that know me personally, you know I couldn't resist the skull. The skull doesn't necessarily need to be there. That was a last minute, hey, here's this. Just throw in there just because it's me. Uh, but what I tried to do is give some flow, I guess. Dragon Rock, because of how it's worn down, actually has a kind of symmetrical flow. And depending on how you stack it, with this one I did a complete round stack all the way up like a beehive and then I placed this branch in there now everything does not have to come out of the top of a tank okay that is something that I've been doing recently just because of the art side of things you could easily scale this down and make a cool tank or raise the tank up with a higher stand and really make it impressive however if it looks like an atoll going into the water and you can imagine this as a freshwater tank 
with just a few Anubias sticking out of maybe a couple pockets, but still making it look very barren because that's the concept. You'll see that I used a couple satellite rocks just to add the three dimension to it. I put one all the way in this back corner that's fairly large, put the small ones right up front, and I came out and gave it structure that went all the way around. So that anywhere you are when you're looking at this tank, if we had maybe a school of 50 neons or 50 of some assorted tetra, even barbs would make a really, really cool tank design out of this. Where they're moving through here, maybe an eel or two to add some kind of a, a dark element to it swimming in and out of the rocks, things like that. Of course you can change things up. This is just one design. If I took everything out again and redid it, it would have a completely different design, I'm sure. There wasn't a lot of forethought into this, and I would actually tell you put a lot of forethought into it. Were I designing this for someone's home, I would absolutely spend some time sketching out some ideas, maybe even talk it over with the customer, and then try to give them some kind of creation. You can do a lot of things. This is just one with the rock that I had, and I didn't use all the rock that I had. I think it's important to, to have overhangs and swim throughs. I think it's also important to have vertical structure so that you're changing it up and it looks like an, it could be a natural landmass somewhere, even if that somewhere is just in your imagination. So this is tank tip number two. This is my freshwater design. Well, give me some feedback. Let me know what you would like to see on the tank tips. That's important. Let me know if you want more different tank designs. I can do those all day. Uh, I think that's about it for now. I wish you all a very happy Easter. This is Chuck Mayer. Please subscribe to our YouTube channel, Fishy Business SC, and uh, have an absolutely wonderful week.